Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can partition circles. And partition might seem like a big word, but all it means is how we can divide something or break something apart. That's all partition means. So we're going to use a fancy word today as we're doing our math. So our learning goal for today says, I can partition circles and rectangles into equal parts and describe the parts as halves. So we're really going to be talking about how we can split um, shapes, specifically circles and rectangles, into halves. Okay, so the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board. You'll need one piece of paper that's like eight and a half by 11. That's just a regular sheet of paper. Scissors, colored pencils or crayons, and you'll need these lesson templates for lesson nine. Okay, so make sure you grab those materials before you get started. All right, friends, let's get started. So what shape is this? It's kind of an easy one to start with, right? Yeah, it's a rectangle. How can you prove that? I want you to pause the video and I want you to think about how can you prove that this shape is a rectangle? And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, here we go. All right, so how can we prove that this is a rectangle? Well, we know that it has four straight sides and four square corners. See, right there. A square corner is called a right angle. So I want you to take your paper and I want you to fold it in half any way that you'd like. So pause the video, just fold it in half. That's all you have to do. Okay, so pause the video. Fold your paper in half and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so some of you maybe folded your paper like this. So you have kind of like you folded it like a hamburger. Maybe some of you folded your paper like a hot dog. And then maybe some of you got crazy and folded your paper like this from the opposite corners together. Huh. So there's different ways we can fold our paper. So now I want you to open your paper up and I want you to draw a line where the fold is and then color one half and label it. So you would label it one half, okay? So whichever way that you have with your paper that you split it into halves, you would end up drawing a line down the middle, kind of like I did with my black lines, color in one half and then label one half. So like if I were to do that, I would label color this half and label it one half. For this middle shape, or this middle rectangle, I would color half and label it one half, and then this is how I would do the other one, okay? So I want you to pause the video, and you're gonna do that with your paper. All right, friends, pause the video more time. Okay, so let's use math language to describe how these papers are alike and different. So before we start talking about that, I want you to pause and I want you to think about that for just a minute and then click play when you have some ideas that you are ready to share. All right, friends, let's talk about those ideas. So how are these papers alike and different? Well, they all have two equal parts, right? They each have two halves and they're all still a whole piece of paper, but they're folded in half in different ways. Oh, excellent. All right, so you have partitioned or divided your paper into shares called halves, two equal shares called halves, okay? So again, there's that word, fancy word partitioned. It just means we're dividing it, we're breaking it apart, okay? So here, these are all examples of two equal shares called halves. Can we describe either part as half? Totally, right? So just um, the shaded part can be one half or the unshaded part can be one half. All right, so now I want you to cut along your fold line. So wherever you have that line drawn to split your paper in half, I want you to cut that part, okay? So just on that line and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, so look, I cut my two. What are these two parts called? Yeah, they're two halves, right? We could say that they're two equal shares and then two equal parts that make a whole, right? Because we need those two parts to make one whole. 
All right, these are also two halves, right? If I just split them, all I did was cut them to have two equal halves. These are also two equal halves, right? So now I want you to put the two parts together. And now what do you have? So pause the video, put those pieces back together, and what do you have? Okay, friends, so what do we have when you put them back together? Whoop, there they go. Now we have one whole, right? So these are also two halves that we have put together to make one whole. Okay, so now I want you to grab your lesson template with the circle, and I want you to cut out your circle. Just cut it out on the black line. So pause your video, cut out that circle, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so now I want you to fold your circle in half. So pause the video, fold it in half any way you want, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So is there more than one way to fold a circle in half? Nope. No matter which way you fold it, the half is still going to look the same. So when we did our rectangles, remember we had, we folded like a hamburger, we folded like a hot dog, and then we folded it kind of diagonally to look like we had two triangles. Well, when you fold a circle, it doesn't matter if you take the top and start and fold it to the bottom, it's still going to look the same as if you folded from the right to the left. They're always going to be the same when you fold a circle in half. All right, so this reminds me of certain foods, this shape, right? Can you guess which foods I'm thinking about? Well, you know what, friends? Let's taco about it. Oh, it reminds me of a taco, right? It's like the shape of a taco shell. Oh, goodness. It's like an upside down one, but yeah. Okay, so what are some other things that you can think of, foods that maybe look like this shape? Ooh, has anybody ever had a quesadilla before? Right? It's got like that cheese. Sometimes it's got chicken in it. It's like folded in half. And then maybe, ooh, an omelet. Right? Has anybody ever had an omelet where you have the eggs and the cheese and all the yummy veggies and meats and stuff? They just kind of fold it in half. So whether it's eggs or a tortilla, sometimes, or we sometimes take a circle and fold it in half, right? So a quesadilla and an omelet and a taco, they can all start off flat, but then we fold it in half and we have this other shape. We have the two parts. Pretty cool. All right, so now I want you to open up your circle and draw a straight line down the fold line, so just like I did. Then I want you to color one half and label it, so the same way that we did with our sheet of paper before. So pause the video, draw a line down the middle on your fold line, color half and label it, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so here I'm coloring half and I'm labeling one half. Now, if you chose to color the other side on your paper, the other side of your circle, that's okay. That's still one half. As long as we color one part, you have colored one half. All right, so how would you describe this circle now? Yeah, we could say that one half is shaded and the other half is unshaded. We could say we have two equal shares. And we have two halves. Yeah, exactly. Those are some ways that we could describe our circle now. All right, so friends, let's grab our lesson template. So look at the shapes on your lesson template. Okay, if you don't have it, you could look right here because I have it for you on the screen. I want you to circle the shapes that have two equal shares. Now, if you don't have your paper, you could just point to the ones that have the equal shares. Okay, so pause the video. Circle or point to the one, to the shapes that have two equal shares. And then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, let's take a look. So this shape, shape A, has two equal parts, or two equal shares, same thing. So does D, so does E, and so does F. What do you notice about shape A? I want you to pause the video, think about shape A. What's something we could notice about that? or observe, maybe like an attribute or something. All right, so it looks like a card if you fold it over. Oh, that's a good one. 
and maybe the parts would be equal, and there are two of them, so they're halves. Oh, what an interesting observation. We've said that the shapes need to be the same size, so if you fold one side of the rectangle on top of the other, they match. Then they must be halves, so it's just like that card. Awesome. All right, what do you notice about shape B? I want you to pause the video. I want you to think about shape B, and then click play when you're ready to talk about it together. All right, friends, so here's some of the things we could think about, right? So if shape B was a pizza, it wouldn't be fair shares. The parts aren't equal, so it's not halves. Oh, yeah, I like that. I like that thinking. So halves means two equal parts make up the whole. Yeah, awesome. All right, what do you notice about shape C? So pause the video, think about shape C, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, what do you notice about shape C? Yeah, shape C is not halves because there's there are three parts, not two. So even though they're not equal, that part doesn't even matter because there's too many parts to be halves. We can't have three parts and it be considered halves. Okay, and then we also notice about shapes D, E, and F. Those are all equal parts. There are two equal parts. So that's pretty cool. All right, so friends, you did an awesome job partitioning circles and rectangles into halves. Way to go. I'm super proud of you. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.